Oh, I'm Dr. Guy Reeder. I'm a, a professor at Mayo uh, in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a recent publication that's coming out in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Uh, so the title of this article is Safety and Efficacy of Extracorporeal Shockwave Myocardial Revascularization Therapy for Patients with Refractory Angina Pectoris. So the reason for uh, this research uh, was uh, trying to find new treatment solutions for patients with refractory angina. These are typically patients uh, that have exhausted the usual revascularization strategies. They've had bypass, they've had stents, they're on multiple anti-anginal medications, uh, and they're still having symptoms. Uh, so we know from animal experiments uh, that delivery of uh, acoustic shock wave energy after experimental artery ligation is associated with uh, improvement in development of new blood vessels, uh, so-called neovascularization or collateral development. And we don't really know why that occurs. Uh, we know it's associated with increased levels of uh, substances such as vascular endothelial growth factor and nitric oxide. Uh, and these uh, things are associated with the uh, recruitment of progenitor cells. But the exact mechanisms are uncertain. Now this type of energy, this acoustic energy, is very similar. Uh, in fact, it's identical to that used for lithotripsy. Uh, but it's about 10 times less powerful. Uh, so our goal is not to fragment stones, uh, but to um, cause some interaction with the myocardium uh, that hopefully will stimulate blood vessel development. Uh, so for our trial, uh, we uh, identified 15 patients at three sites with refractory angina. Um, we identified ischemic uh, zones of the myocardium using SPECT imaging. And uh, then we used two-dimensional echocardiography uh, to help uh, us orient uh, our shockwave applicator on the chest wall and target areas for delivery of shockwave energy. Uh, typically, we can treat about a cubic uh, centimeter of myocardium. Uh, patients underwent nine treatment sessions over nine weeks. Each treatment session had about 100 shocks. Um, and then we did a follow-up of patients uh, at four months. Now, we were very interested in safety endpoints, so we monitored things like the electrocardiogram, symptoms, and release of biomarkers uh, during the application of the shockwave energy. And the safety results were very good. We uh, patients really didn't have any symptoms, uh, and the biomarkers uh, were not elevated. We didn't see any change in wall motion uh, pre or post treatment. Now we also looked at SPECT imaging um, pre-treatment uh, and uh, at four months. These results were a little bit disappointing because we didn't see an improvement uh, in perfusion pre to post. However, we did see a large improvement uh, in uh, treadmill time duration. So uh, at four months, patients could exercise about two minutes longer on either Bruce or modified Bruce protocol. Uh, and this was about a 40% improvement in uh, their exercise capacity. So we think we have an, an interesting new therapy. We're not exactly certain how it works. It does help patients' symptoms, and we think it deserves further study in a larger trial. Uh, patients with uh, refractory angina uh, are difficult to treat. Uh, it's very frustrating for the patient and for the physician, and so we need new therapies to offer them. And we're working on numerous therapies uh, at Mayo uh, for this. Along with this type of uh, study, we're also doing uh, studies with uh, gene therapy and cell therapy. And we hope that some of these will be fruitful for these patients. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. 
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.